This problem is mainly about how much of a simple solution you can come up with. And you might be surprised that is the most efficient solution as well. So let's see how we can come up with it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain the problem statement and we'll look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will see a brute force solution to solve this problem and then we will try to come up with an efficient solution in the most simplest way possible. After that, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a string consisting of words and spaces. That's it. And you have to find out just the length of the last word. So this problem is pretty straightforward, right? So let us look at some of the sample test cases. So in our first test case, you can see that I have the string hello world. So what is the last word in this? The last word is world, correct? And its length is 5. So for the first test case, 5 is your answer. Correct? Now, to understand it even more, let us look at our second test case. In our second test case, you can see that we have a lot of uneven spaces all throughout the string. Correct? And the last word. This last word will not be the space. This last word will be any word that is coming just before the space. Correct? So, what you have to kind of do is just ignore the spaces that are at the very end and then try to find a word. So, in your second test case, the last word is moon, correct? And that has a length of 4. So, for your second test case, 4 will be your answer, right? Now, it is not necessary that every word will be a dictionary word. So, if you look at the third test case, you can see that the last word is joy boy. So, Technically, if you think about it, the dictionary word is boy, correct? So, boy is not the last word. The last word, or for instance, any word in the string, they have to be separated by a space. So, this entire string, this will be your last word. So, what is its length? Its length is 6. So, for the third test case, 6 will be the answer. So, now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, first try it out once again on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. To come up with a solution, let us try to take up the test case which has all sorts of variations. So, in this example test case, you can see that I have spaces in the beginning, I have spaces in the end, and I also have some uneven spaces. For example, over here I have two spaces, over here I have three spaces, and over here I have just one space. Correct? So, what do you do? How do you proceed? One thought that can come to your mind is, okay, what I can do is, I can start to iterate this string from the beginning, correct? And as I am iterating, I will try to find out each of the word that I encounter. So, when I start iterating, the first word I get is fly, correct? So, what can you do? You can try to maintain some kind of an array and then try to find out all of the words that you have got. So, you got fly and then you go ahead and you find me. So, okay, you go to your second word and that is me. Moving ahead, what will you see? You see there are two spaces. So you ignore them because you just have to find the word, correct? Then you find the next word that is two. Going forward once again, you ignore the spaces. And then you find the next word and that is the. And then lastly, you find the word moon. If you try to move ahead now, you will just see spaces and there is no more word, correct? So once you have iterated through this entire string, you just look at your array. And then check the last word that you found. The last word is moon, correct? And what if its length? Its length is 4. And in fact, that is your answer, right? But the problem with this approach is that you are iterating through the entire string, correct? And your last word may be at the very end. And also, you are taking up some space to store all of your words, correct? You do not need to store all of your words. All you have to do is, you have to just tell me the length of the last word. What can we think more? Technically, what you are doing over here, you are just getting each of the word and ignoring all of the spaces, right? So technically, this string translate as just this and then you will find out all the words and find out that, okay, this is my last word and this is its length. But just try to think. Do you actually need to store all of the words? You just need the length of the last word, correct? 
So why do you even want to iterate through all the entire string? And why do you also have to store all of it? So there is a very efficient way to come up with a solution. Okay, so once again, I have the sample string over here, right? And you have to find the length of the last word. Try to think what we were doing in the previous scenario. We started from the left direction, right? And then we were proceeding ahead. Now try to think. When you have to find the length of the last word, why are you starting from the very beginning? You can also start from the very end, right? And then you can try to find out your word. So just try to think. Just start from the backward direction. And if you're getting spaces, just keep on ignoring them, right? Because you don't have to do anything with it, right? As soon as you get your first character, that is where you know that, okay, my word has started. And you do not even have to store the word. Just count how many characters you are getting. Just maintain a count variable and now keep going left. You get N, O, O and then a M. So that is a total of four characters, right? And now once you move further to the left direction, you see a space. So this space tells you that, hey, my word is completed. That's it. You do not need to traverse anywhere again to the left because you have found the last word and that's it. This is your answer. The length of your last word is four. So you see what we did over here. We did not have to take the help of any additional data structure. We did not even have to store the string because it is not even asked. We just have to return the length. So based upon this, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have my sample string that is passed in as an input parameter to the function length of last word. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving ahead with a dry run. What is the first thing that we do? First of all, we initialize a count variable and that is going to store the length of your last word. And as you remember, where did we start our calculation from? We started from the very end, correct? So we start a for loop that starts from the very end index. So my loop will start at this index, which is a space, right? And you have to go all the way to the beginning. What do you do in this loop now? In this loop, you check that the index you are at, is it a space or not? Because if this is not a space, then it means that it is a character, right? And your word has already started. But right now, this is a space. So we will not execute this condition and we will try to go in the else condition. So if you remember, my count is still zero, right? And when my count is zero, it just means that I am still encountering spaces. I have not yet encountered a character. What will happen now? This loop will run again and this time, my index will get updated. This index will now move to the second last character. And the second last character is actually a character. It is not a space. You are pointing at the letter N. So what does that mean? It means that your word has actually started. So this time I will be in my if condition and I see that, okay, this is not a space. So I increment the value of count. So count now becomes one, right? What will happen now? This loop will run again and my index will be updated once again to O. So you see what is happening over here? This will go on happening until and unless I reach up till M. As soon as I reach M, my count will be four, right? And now this loop will run again. As soon as this loop runs, it sees that, hey, this is not a character. You encounter a space. So you simply return out the count. And that is where the loop ends and it will give you the value of your count. The time complexity of this solution will be order of n because it could be a worst case where your entire string is just one word. So that is the length and you will have to traverse through the entire string. The space complexity of this solution is order of one because you do not take any extra space to arrive at your solution. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that sometimes it is best not to over-engineer a solution. You saw in this problem, right? It was so simple. And sometimes the most simple and the straightforward way is also the most efficient one. That is why companies like Amazon and Microsoft tend to ask these questions. 
they want to see how confident you are. So whenever you see such problems, just come up with a solution and try to find even if there are any shortcomings. Only then go on to optimize it. You will be surprised. Sometimes it becomes very, very simple. So while going through this video, did you face any problems? Or have you seen any other problems which look complex or which look so trivial and are actually solvable with a minimal effort? So tell me all of this in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. It will be also helpful for anyone who is watching the video. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.